Freedom Man, that's what it's all about. You've got to groove on freedom, like the good book says. listening to what on earth is happening this show will discuss the topics of human consciousness mind control natural law the occult and all issues that affect the freedom of the people of earth what on earth is happening will endeavor to shine light upon the darkness of our world and to offer empowering solutions to the problems we face as humanity approaches its critical moment of choice. And now, here is your host, Mark Passio. Freedom for the people humanity, and all mankind. Liberate your soul and mind. It's waiting for you all to find. What incredible lyrics. Hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, April 13th, 2010. I'm your host, Mark Passio, and you are listening to What on Earth is Happening. My website is whatonearthishappening.com. The network's website is uh, revolutionbroadcasting.com. You can listen here live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Uh, before I get into the show topics for tonight, I want to, uh, again, make a few announcements about events that are coming up, very important events that are coming up in the Philadelphia area. And uh, I really would really like to see a lot of people from this area come on out to these events because of the the critical nature uh, of how important they are at this time in history and how absolutely vital it is to get this information out to people that really uh, have not heard of it yet and have not looked into this uh, very critical data that uh, we all need to be looking into if we're going to solve the problems uh, that we are currently up against. So the first event is a free documentary showing of America, Freedom to Fascism, the great documentary by the highly acclaimed film producer Aaron Russo. This is going to be this coming Monday, April 19th, from 7 7 p.m. at the Ethical Society Building. That's at 1906 South Rittenhouse Square in Philadelphia. Here's the description. So a group in the area called Truth, Freedom, Prosperity. Truth, Freedom, Prosperity is hosting these documentaries at the Ethical Society. Truth, Freedom, Prosperity is proud to host our next feature film, the highly acclaimed film by the late, great Aaron Russo, America, Freedom to Fascism. If you haven't seen this film yet, please do everything in your power to be here. If you've seen it enough times to recite it word for word, then invite or bring as many guests as you would like. As always, there are no charge for these screenings. However, donations are encouraged to help pay for the venue. This documentary is about an honest search for the truth about the Federal Reserve Bank and the legality of the internal revenue system. Through extensive interviews with recognized experts and authorities, the director shows an astonishing revelation of how the federal government and the bankers have fooled the American people by taking their wages and putting it into the pockets of the super rich. The director goes so far as to interview one of the masterminds of the IRS code. And you, the viewer, can draw your own conclusions as to how the system works. This is not a documentary filled with opinions, conjecture, or editorial comment. It is a true documentary with a purpose, and that is to educate every wage earner 
about the Federal Reserve Bank and the IRS, how they got started, and where the money goes. It's extremely well done. It will make you laugh. It will make you angry. But most of all, it will inspire you to take action. That is what it is all about. For more information, visit truthfreedomprosperity.org. Okay, so that's the first event announcement for tonight. The second one, next Saturday, is the official End the Fed March Rally and Concert in Philadelphia. So I'm going to open this one up with a quote. Okay, The Chinese philosopher Wang Yangming said that to know and not to do is not to know. And I would expand on that brilliant insight even more so. I would say to know and not to act is not to know or care. To know and not to act is really not to know or care. Think about that one, folks, because there's a lot of people that do understand how the Federal Reserve System and the federal income tax work, and yet they're frozen into inaction by their fear. And fear is something we're going to talk a lot about tonight when we get into our main topics for this evening. But I'll go on with the event announcement. I just think that's a very, very prudent thing to keep in mind. To know and to do nothing is really not to know, and it really means you don't really care enough to take proper moral action, what you know to be right. So the end the Fed, March rally and concert. April 24th, that's next Saturday. This will be going on from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the gathering is going to begin at City Hall, which is at 1500 Market Street in Philadelphia. And it's going to, uh, there will then be a march down to the Federal Reserve building on, uh, I believe that's at 5th and Arch Streets in Philadelphia. And then uh, there'll be an outdoor rally with food and entertainment. So here's some uh, commentary that I put on, uh, on this event when I sent it out through my mailing list last week. I said, if you still don't understand how intricately related the Federal Reserve System is to the destruction of our natural freedoms, then you haven't really learned a thing, or you've chosen to deliberately ignore it out of apathy, laziness, cowardice, or all three. Words are not enough. If you value your freedom and the freedom of future generations of humanity, take action. Stand with us in courage at this event and become involved with this cause today. Truth, Freedom, Prosperity is proud to present the official End the Fed March and Rally for Philadelphia, April 24, 2010. The schedule of events are as follows. 10 o'clock a.m., there will be a gathering at the west side of City Hall. At 11.22, the march to the Federal Reserve Building will start. From 12.30 to 3 o'clock, there will be an outdoor rally with food and entertainment, and speakers as well. And the location of that will be at Independence Mall State Park or the Independence Visitor Center, Center depending on conditions. This is free to attend, but you're welcome to also make a donation to uh, help pay for the event. The, uh, the, the speakers and entertainment are as follows. There's going to be some musical acts that uh, have uh, themes in their music and lyrics inspired by the cause of freedom. Jordan Page will be playing, Amy Allen, Amp Killer, and Heist Click. So those are the schedule, scheduled musical acts. And the two speakers lined up so far are... Michael Badnarik, who needs no introduction, constitutionalist. His website is constitutionpreservation.org. And Gigi Bowman from Liberty Candidates, 
That's liberty-candidates.org. They'll be the two speakers. For more information on this event, go to endthefed.us or truthfreedomprosperity.org. So those are the announcements that I have for tonight. And next thing I want to do is give the call-in number. The call-in number for this show is 347-884-9417. The call-in number, 347-884-9417. You're welcome to call in. And uh, hold on when you call. I will get to your call. I check the switchboard frequently during the show. I may not get to you immediately, but once you call in, just uh, hold tight, and I'll, I will get to you, okay? So, in previous weeks on this show, what we've been doing basically is largely philosophical. It's largely conceptual. We've been talking about the aspects of human consciousness, how it's a th there are three basic a aspects to our consciousness, thought, emotion, and action. We started looking at the human brain and its basic structures, also a three-fold or a three-tiered system, the triune brain, comprised of the R complex, the limbic system, and the human neocortex. We looked at what brain imbalances cause what they do to the brain when either the left brain is completely dominant or the right brain is completely dominant in, in, in an individual. So what we're trying to really get down to on this show, and this will continue as the weeks go on, are causal factors. That's what this show is really all about. And that's what's going to really set it apart from a lot of other programs that really do a lot to discuss and to reveal the symptoms of what's taking place in our reality, but don't very much really look at the underlying causal factors, the, the, the deep relationships and the uh, things that really go into creating the external reality that we see and that we experience. That's what, that's what the show really is all about getting down to causal factors, causality. And basically, we looked at the two basic ways that human beings are fooled, the two basic ways, the reasons for human suffering. It's incredibly simple. People accept that which isn't true, and they refuse to accept that which is true. That's it really is that simple, folks. People accept lies and refuse to accept truth. And there is such a thing as truth. And that can really be boiled down. The causal factors that are really creating the human condition can really be boiled down to one phrase. The ability to tell truth from falsehood. The ability to tell truth from falsehood. That's what is creating our experience in the world. That's it. That simple. But we'll, we'll expand on that. We'll unpack it further. We'll look at different aspects of it. We've been also discussing a philosophy uh, over the last couple of weeks called solipsism. The idea that there is no such thing as truth. That, that perception is reality. That really the only thing that is real is the contents of one's own mind. And I call this the biggest lie. This is the underlying fundamental lie upon which all other lies are built because it is making the claim that an individual is the personal arbiter of truth in one's own life. That truth is not something to be discovered and accepted. That you can make it up as you go along. And more people are a victim of this ideology than anyone would even imagine, would even care to imagine. It's a rampant ideology. If you really start to talk to people and try to get down to their basic underlying um, worldview, which is another thing we're going to talk about today on the show, 
you understand that many people's worldview is based in solipsism. So for, for today's show, we'll, we'll be discussing that a little bit more when we come to the topic of worldview. What I'm going to do on the show today, and hopefully I'll break this between the two hours somewhat evenly, is we're going, I'm going to discuss the concept of polarity. Polarity. Okay? Now, uh, b before I even get into this, I want to address one other thing uh, about how I'm going to do things on the show. For the next several weeks, we'll probably continue to break down conceptual ideas and philosophies and really underlying things that people have to have a background in understanding if we're going to understand the bigger picture. So probably for at least the next month, I'll continue to break down and expand upon uh, topics and concepts. And these are largely, um, again, related with causal factors of what's going on. And uh, they're, they're largely contained in my presentation. But some things, you know, I'll expand even further on since we have more time to do that. I want to address... For, for some people that are familiar with this material already, bear with me because there's a lot of people who don't have a background in this material and may be coming to it for the first time. So, you know, when they, when they come to the site, when they turn the show on, when they download a podcast, this may be new for a lot of people. And I hope it will be new for a lot of people. Otherwise, we're not reaching anyone new. So there's a delicate balance to walk here with um, moving too fast and losing people who may be completely new to this information versus um, you know, moving too slowly and perhaps boring people that want to get into further uh, details and topics. So again, I'm, I'm going to try to sh strike that balance and uh, bear with me. Uh, you're welcome to comment on how well I'm doing at that. And, you know, give some suggestions. But after we go through a few more weeks of basic um, conceptual material, then I think I'll start having some guests on the show and uh, interviewing people and getting their take on things. So uh, that's how it's going to work. And for today, the two basic topics that I'd like to cover, the first one is polarity. And we're going to look at the two basic emotional polarities. There are really only two basic forces at work within us, and they take different forms, and they have different manifestations. So we'll look at these two seemingly opposite polarized forces. So that's what's called polarity, okay? Opposites or as we'll see as we go further into the topic, seeming opposites. The next topic, the next uh, part of tonight, tonight's uh, breakdown of concepts is going to be worldview. We got a little bit into this during uh, the last program, but basically worldview is exactly what it sounds like. It's how do we view the world that we live in? How do we view our our relationship to the world, our relationship in the wider picture of things, and um, our relationship to other people. So worldview is really the driving factor behind what we are creating in our lives. Essentially, what we think about most of the time is what we're becoming. What we think about most of the time is what we're becoming. The worldview that we hold shapes the events that manifest. I'll say that again. The worldview that we hold shapes the events that manifest in our lives. So the way we think is critically important to what is actually taking place on the screen in front of us, so to speak, what we see out there in the world. So these are the two concepts. 
that I'll be working with and breaking down in detail tonight, polarity and worldview. So let's start with polarity. And, you know, again, not everyone is familiar with some of these concepts and words, so I'll spell polarity for everyone. This is P-O-L-A-R-I-T-Y, polarity. There are two basic underlying emotional forces. These are forces that are indwelling within us. You can look at them, look at them as emanations, or you could look at them as essences. These, these are things that really can't be boiled down much further. They're primary things. Okay? They're primary causers. These are prime movers, you can look at them as. So there are two essential emotions, and they're polar opposites of each other, at least seemingly. So let me explain what I mean by seeming polar opposites. In any quality that you can really think of, there are, there are scales or there are degrees within. Okay, so look at the dynamics of hot and cold. Hot and cold. Are these really opposites? Really? Well, most people would say, sure, they're completely opposite. If something's hot, it's not cold. If something's cold, it's not hot. But if you look a little bit deeper than the seeming opposite nature of these two qualities, hot and cold, you'll see that really all you're talking about when you talk about hot and cold is energy. That's all. You're talking about how much energy is indwelling within the thing that you're measuring. So temperature is a, is a, a measuring scale for energy. Okay? If it, there's a lot of heat energy, we call it hot. If there isn't a lot of heat energy, or there's a largely an absence of heat energy, we call it cold. So when you look at it from that perspective, are they really polar opposites? No. They're really measures of the same dynamic, heat energy. And that's all there really is, heat energy. Okay? There isn't hot and cold. Those are two polar perceptions. It's a way of looking at heat energy. You're comparing it to something else, to another extreme of the scale. Because if there was only one temperature, there would be no such thing as the concept of temperature. I'll say that again. If there were only one temperature, there would be no such thing as the concept of temperature. You would have nothing to compare it against at all. Everything is one temperature. It always was, it, all, it is now, it always will be. Then the, temp, the concept of temperature would never even occur to any being. You couldn't even think of what temperature is. There's, there's no comparison, there's no scale of comparison. So you could do this with another dynamic like light and dark. Well, it seems like two polar opposites again. But if you really look at that, those are just measures of the same dynamic. Once again, light or its absence. Because dark isn't actually a thing. It's simply the absence of light. Light energy. You go into a room with a dark room with a candle, you're bearing light energy into the room. And you could say, okay, that candle lit up the room and there's light here now. You can't do the same thing with darkness. You can't shine darkness into a room. The concept doesn't make any sense because there's, no, there's really no such thing as darkness. There's only light energy or its absence. 
So we will see that this concept applies in the emotional polarities that I'm going to discuss on this show. That there really is only one thing contained within these seeming polar opposites. The other thing is the illusory component. It's something that really isn't there, but we see it as being there, so we have a scale of comparison to compare the real thing against, to come to know the real essence. Okay? So look at it in the, in the context of light and darkness. There really is only light energy or light energy not manifesting itself, and we call that darkness. Okay? So the two basic emotional polarities. The first one is the essence of everything that we perceive as good or feeling good. Anything that we perceive in that context, what creates anything that we perceive as feeling good within us or what we what we uh, perceive as good for us in the external reality that we exist in. And it's very simple. Most people immediately understand what this is. Most people get this on the first uh, shot if you ask them what is the underlying essence of everything that we perceive of as good, as uplifting, as beneficial, as truly powerful, and of course, the word that I'm talking about is love. Love is the first basic emotional polarity, the first basic seeming polarity, as I I will further explain. This isn't, what I'm talking about here when I talk about love is not a romance novel or a Hollywood movie definition of love. So this isn't possessing someone. This isn't, you know, being jealous about somebody. This isn't um, uh, trying to keep someone. It isn't uh, attachment to someone else. These are, these are dramatized and romanticized notions of love that we see in in popular fiction and uh, on on mainstream media and in Hollywood. That's not the concept that I'm talking about here. Love is the force which expands consciousness. I'll say that again because of how important that statement is. Love is the force that expands human consciousness, that expands consciousness, period. Okay? It is the force which opens up and flowers consciousness. So anything that is moving us toward a greater understanding of ourselves and the world in which we live, and that is expanding consciousness outward to ever greater and greater awareness. That is love. That's what love is. Now, some people will say, well, you can't really define love or put a definition on it because it limits it. But if you really think about the words that I'm saying here in a wider context, This explains what this powerful force really is. It is that which opens up and expands human consciousness. Now, of course, there is this seeming opposite or this polarity that goes against the force of love. and and seeks to do the exact opposite. 
So love expands consciousness and moves it to ever greater states of awareness. The opposite emotional polarity from love that closes awareness down. It shuts down. It is the compressive force. Closes consciousness down. Makes you not want to look. Makes you not want to seek. Makes someone not want to understand or care or act. And most people usually will get this if given the opportunity to take a guess at what it is. Some people will guess hate because they, you know, in in word association, generally think of that as the first thing that is the opposite of love. But hate is a manifestation of this force. And of course, the force that I'm referring to is fear. Fear is the opposite emotional polarity from love. It's the force which closes down human consciousness. It strangles the flower, the flowering of consciousness. It makes people cut off from their higher nature. And these two basic emotional polarities, love, which is the expansive force, and fear, which is the contractive force, have both of them, each of them have internal qualities. They have qualities which express within us, within our consciousness. They also have qualities which create something in the external reality that we live in. So they have what I call an internal and an external manifestation. So love has an internal manifestation and love has an external manifestation. Fear has an internal manifestation and an external manifestation. So let's get into these four other qualities. The internal and external qualities of love and fear. So If we look at the internal expression of love, how does the love force manifest internally within us, within our consciousness? What we're basically saying is if the expansive force of consciousness which we call love, manifests in an individual. The expansive force of consciousness manifests within the individual. What could we describe that state or that manifestation as? Well, you could give it a few names. You could call it self-love. And that's one way of looking at it. Some people would describe this state as enlightenment. And that's another way of looking at it. Some people would describe this state as balance or harmony within. So internal peace is another way you could look at it. That's a very good way of looking at this quality, this internal manifestation of the force of love within an individual. Now, I have a specific name for it that I talk about in my presentation. And the name 
may be misleading to some people when they first hear it spoken. But let me explain what I view this internal quality as. We talked about in earlier shows the three aspects of human consciousness. Thought, emotion, and action. When we bring these three aspects into harmony within us, such that there is no internal contradiction within our consciousness. So, what that means is, we are a person that behaves in a way such that as we think, so we feel, and so we act in the world. So the way that we think, what's going on inside our mind, reflects in, in, in perfect balance and unison what's going on inside our heart center, okay? our care, our emotions. And these two qualities, what we think and what we feel within, are not, not in internal opposition with how we act or behave in the world, with things that we do. Our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions are unified as one. And there is no internal contradiction or opposition between those three things. Now, let's think about this in a symbolic context for a minute before I go further. The thoughts are the creator aspect. What we create has to exist as a thought the emanation, okay? This is the essence quality. Then we have an internal manifestation called our emotions. This is the spirit side. So we have the mind aspect, the thought. That's the essence. Then we have the, the internal quality, which is the emotions, and that's the spiritual aspect. The spirit in which we do things is called our emotions. And then there is a byproduct, okay, a male byproduct, because actions are a male essence. We do them outwardly. Actions are thrust outward into the world. So um, the male child of our thoughts and our emotions is our actions. So we have a trinity here. We have a creator aspect. We have a spirit aspect. And we have a child aspect. A male child. A son. Okay, so there's the essence. Thoughts. That's mind. That, that goes on in the mind. That's the creator. The internal quality the emotions. That's the Holy Spirit or the sacred feminine, the goddess. And then there's the child, the divine child, a male child, the son, so to speak, symbolically. That's our actions in the world, the byproduct of the marriage of our thoughts and our emotions. Now, if they are all one, all three of these things are one, we don't have any internal opposition. Now, the word opposition is critical to understand. If you go back and look at the ancient Hebrew language, there's a word that means opposer opposition, adversary. And that word is 
Shatan, where we get the word Satan from. Okay? It means that which divides, that which opposes, that which creates opposition. Because this force, the adversary, the opposer, the one who divides us, gets into us the minute that we are internally divided because our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions are not operating in unison as one. We're not a being that as we think, so we feel, so we act. We'll often do something in opposition to how we say we feel. This is the betrayal of the spirit because you're going against what you know to be right and what you feel to be right. Sin against the spirit. Taking an action for a justification. I know that I should be doing this, but I'm going to do this, which is not in the spirit of what I know and feel. And that is the force called Shatan, or Satan, the opposer, the adversary. It's not a, an, an a actual being that people imagine in, in different religious connotations. It's a way of being in the world. That's the kind of being that it is. And there's mostly just about everyone exists in this state of opposition at some point or another in their lives and continues to exist in that state of opposition. There's very few people who are a completely united being and do and take the actions that they say they think and feel. Because it's hard. It requires courage. It requires an immense amount of courage. And there's so many things that are built up in this world to make us go against our better judgment. And we justify it. We keep justifying those things. Oh, if I didn't do that, then there would be these repercussions. If I did that, there would be these repercussions. There's an endless supply of justifications that we provide for not doing the correct moral thing in life. And this, to take this back to the concept of the emotional polarities, specifically the internal, indwelling aspect of the dynamic of love, the force of love, the state that I refer to as the expression of love when it comes to fruition, when it comes to flowering inside an individual, I call it dominion. Dominion. This is a word that means rulership. It means that someone is the king or queen. They have dominion. This is self-dominion. It doesn't imply any external ownership or rulership. This is dominion of the kingdom of self. You could call it mastery, as many people have. That's why we refer to great masters and wisdom teachers and avatars. They had dominion. As they thought, so they felt, so they acted. And those three existed in harmony. They weren't divided within. They didn't have the indwelling force of the adversary, the opposer, opposition that divides us from inside of ourself. So that's what I mean by dominion. You could call it self-control. 
you could call it self-ownership. Self-ownership. And a great word that really does represent this concept. I actually thought of even changing the word that I used in the presentation to this word because it really does sum up this concept perfectly. And I, I, I would say you could use it interchangeably with dominion or self-love or harmony within or, or internal peace or internal balance. Okay? And that's sovereignty. Sovereignty. Because what sovereignty really means is the same thing as dominion. If you break the word down, so reign, self reign, self ownership, self governance, no external governance, no external control, internal governance, internal control over one's thoughts, emotions, and actions. And knowing, knowing how to use all of those things in harmony, such that we're not divided within ourselves, That is the state that I call dominion, and that you could call many things. Probably uh, a, a very good synonym with dominion would be sovereignty. And that's what this show is ultimately all about. It is about sovereignty sovereignty, self-rulership, no masters, self-ownership. The only way we can really come to that state, to that condition within ourselves is if we become beings that as we think, so we feel, and so we act. So we act. And I'm stressing that for an extremely important reason. Because that's what this is all about. The courage to act. Now, when this condition is not present, is not present, there is a state of mind that takes over an individual. Well, if dominion or sovereignty is self-love, it's self-ownership, it's self-rulership, being the king or queen of one's own personal kingdom of self. What is the opposite, the polar opposite of that state? So this would mean that the being is essentially ruled by the force of fear, the opposite of love. Well, this would mean that the person is always in internal opposition with themselves. They're always in contradiction between what they think, what they feel, and how they act. These three things are never in harmony in a being internally ruled by fear. If their consciousness is governed by the force of fear, the state of consciousness within results in a condition that's very simple. And it's called confusion. Confusion. What confusion is, is the state of internal disharmony and the state of the consciousness being closed down and cut off from higher self, cut off from higher levels of awareness. 
someone in this condition is not capable of knowing truth from falsehood. They don't even know what's going on inside them. How would anybody expect them to understand what's going on in the external reality that they live in? And to be able to tell what's real from what's fantasy and what's illusion. They don't understand what's taking place in their own thoughts or in their own emotions. Because they're in such a state of confusion that they're not in touch with their emotional compass, their guidance system for direction in life. They don't value truth and understand how natural law works, how getting in touch with truth improves the quality of our life and not caring about it makes our life turn to complete disarray and breakdown. Someone in confusion does not really love themselves. They don't have internal love. The, the true expression of love. They may think they understand what love is in a limited definition, in a limited scope. But they do not really have internally dwelling self-love. They couldn't possibly understand freedom. They couldn't possibly understand sovereignty. Those words are meaningless to a person in a state of internal opposition. This person can, a person in this state of consciousness can pretty much be made or led to do anything. They don't really have a strong internal makeup. Their psychological condition is frail and weak. They are led. They are the led. And sooner or later, the led will become the dead. Harsh, yes, but true, definitely. Okay? So... This is, these are really critical concepts to understand and keep in mind. Person in this state governed by fear will always be in a state of confusion, which is internal opposition. This is the internally manifesting quality of fear. So, we have love and fear. We have dominion or sovereignty and confusion or indwelling opposition within the being. What do these things create externally? What do they create in the outside world that we see on the screen of reality, so to speak? Well, when love is present and has grown to a great extent in many individuals in the wider reality, in the shared reality that we all live in, there's a state that comes online. There's a condition that bursts onto the world. Because if love the true essence of love, the expansion of human consciousness, is carried within many individuals in any society. And those many individuals truly understand what's taking place inside themselves, and they live in a way that is reflected by the notion that as they think, so they feel, and so they act. The condition that will eventually erupt onto the world is called freedom. Freedom is the external manifestation 
of the love force. Freedom is the external manifestation of the force of love. And that can only occur when enough of the individual consciousnesses, human beings on this planet, come within themselves to a state of dominion, of sovereignty, of self-rulership, because they've made the active free will decision to take actions that are in keeping with their thoughts and their emotions. And they cannot be driven apart from that. They cannot be made to go against what they know to be right and what they feel in their heart to be right. Their actions will be one with those qualities. And freedom won't occur in this world one second before that state occurs within many, 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 many more individuals walking on this world. Don't expect it until people change their mind, their hearts, and their actions in drastic ways compared to what they're thinking, feeling, and doing now. Now, the opposite of freedom, the external manifestation of the force of fear, the external manifestation of the force of fear, this is the, fear is the force which shuts down consciousness. It's the force which divides us. It's the force which puts us into a state of internal opposition or confusion. And when that goes into the external reality widely, su such that many, many, many people are not self-governing, don't understand sovereignty, aren't concerned with the truth, aren't concerned with freedom, and are totally in a state of opposition within, you get a condition that manifests in the shared reality that we live in. And that condition is control. Control. And this time I do mean external control. People trying to control the actions of other people. Even if they're not doing anything to harm anyone. You get people wanting to control more and more and more and more. And it's never enough. Ultimately, this condition leads to slavery. And largely, that's where we're at, folks. For those who don't know that yet. Many people listening to this show just happen to be coming through my website for the first time. Understand that's where we're at. And if we're going to get out of that, we have to become united, not divided anymore within. Becoming beings that as we think, so we feel, and so we act. And that's a tall task that requires a lot of courage. And I'm going to leave it there for the first hour. And um, I'm going to, uh, I'll give the websites and the call-in number, and then I'll start the music for the second hour. All right? So the websites are whatonearthishappening.com and revolutionbroadcasting.com. If anybody wants to talk about these concepts for the second hour, the call-in number is 347 Eight eight four nine four one seven. I'm Mark Passio. This is What on Earth is Happening. See you for the next hour.
freedom, man. That's what it's all about. You've got to groove on freedom, like the good book says. listening to what on earth is happening this show will discuss the topics of human consciousness mind control natural law the occult and all issues that affect the freedom of the people of earth what on earth is happening will endeavor to shine light upon the darkness of our world and to offer empowering solutions to the problems we face as humanity approaches its critical moment of choice. And now, here is your host, Mark Passio. All right, we're back. Uh, this is What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio. Today is Tuesday, April 13th, 2010. The websites are whatonearthishappening.com and revolutionbroadcasting.com. The call-in number for this show is 347-884-9417. I'm going to go straight to the announcements. And after that, I am going to, uh, I see we have a caller. I'm going to uh, go to some calls. Uh, hold on, caller. Um, I will get to you. I'm going to make some announcements again, and um, I'm just going to briefly recap what I talked about on the uh, previous hour. So, two announcements for events that are upcoming. This coming Monday, April 19th, 7 o'clock p.m., at the Ethical Society Building in Philadelphia, 1906 South Rittenhouse Square. There is going to be a free documentary showing of Aaron Russo's great film, his great documentary, America, Freedom to Fascism. This event is hosted by the great group in Philadelphia called Truth, Freedom, Prosperity. Check out their website at truthfreedomprosperity.org. Okay, so that is America, Freedom to Fascism. Free documentary showing Monday, April 19th, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Ethical Society Building, 1906 South Rittenhouse Square in Philadelphia. I know a lot of people in this area have seen this film, but how many people haven't? That's the question. How many people have never heard of any of the concepts or ideas in this film? Well, bring some people out to this event. So many people out there are unaware and need to understand what's in this film. Okay? Just because you've seen it and you know it doesn't mean everyone does. Do the real hard work and try to twist somebody's arm to come out to see this thing because it will enlighten them a lot and hopefully get them to look into some other things. Now, the second event. And uh, on the last hour, I read a quote by the Chinese philosopher Wang Yangming. And I'll I'll read it again, and I'm going to give my take on this. He said, to know and not to do is not to know to know and not to do is not to know and I would expand on that great gem of wisdom I would say to know and not to act is not to know or care to know and not to act is not to know or care 
You know, I see a lot of people going out to lectures. I see a lot of people attending documentaries. I see a lot of people attending discussions. I see a lot of people attending healing sessions and New Age-inspired events. But when it comes to the end the Fed rallies, you get about 200 people in a metropolitan region of over five and a half million, six million maybe, in the entire wider metropolitan area of a city like Philadelphia, where the founding fathers of this country walked, where philosophers like Thomas Paine and, and uh, Thomas Jefferson walked and, and wrote and conveyed their understanding of, of true freedom. But, you know, people, people uh, when it comes to standing up to a real demon like the Federal Reserve System, don't want to take action. So I sent out a mailing about this on my mailing list, and I'm going to read it here. The End the Fed March Rally and Concert for Philadelphia, PA, April 24th. That's a Saturday. Most people are off work on Saturday morning into afternoon. Saturday, April 24th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., it's going to begin at City Hall in Philadelphia, the west side of the City Hall building, 1500 Market Street, Philadelphia. If you still don't understand how intricately related the Federal Reserve System is to the destruction of our natural freedoms, then you haven't really learned a thing. Or you've chosen to deliberately ignore it out of apathy, laziness, cowardice, or all three. Words are not enough. If you value your freedom and the freedom of future generations of humanity, take action. Stand with us in courage at this event and become involved with this cause today. Truth, freedom, prosperity is proud to present the official End the Fed March and Rally for Philadelphia, April 24, 2010. The schedule of events are as follows. At 10 o'clock a.m., there will be a gathering at the west, west side of City Hall. At 11.22 a.m., there will be a march down to the Federal Reserve Bank. From t about 12.30 to 3 p.m., there will be an outdoor rally with food and entertainment and speakers. The location of this will be Independence Mall State Park or Independence Visitor Center, depending on conditions. This event is free to attend and it is about your freedom. You can make a suggested donation of only $5 to help pay for the event if you wish. The speakers and entertainment are as follows. There's going to be a concert. It's headlined by Jordan Page. Also performing will be Amy Allen, Ant Killa, and Heist Click. The speakers will be Michael Badnarik, the Constitutionalist. His website is constitutionpreservation.org. Also speaking is Gigi Bowman from Liberty Candidates. The website is liberty-candidates.org. For more information, visit endthefed.us and truthfreedomprosperity.org. If you're in the Philadelphia area, I highly recommend that you join up to truthfreedomprosperity.org because these guys are one of the few groups that are tackling the true issues that concern human freedom in this area. So visit their website and join today. That's all for the announcements. Uh, last show, I was talking about polarity and the seemingly opposite polarities of love and fear, the basic emotional polarities. And I say seemingly opposite because ultimately one of these is an illusion. And I don't think it's difficult for anybody with any understanding to figure out which one is the true illusion, even though we seem so trapped in it. Fear is an illusion, folks. It doesn't exist. Only love exists, and fear is simply 
the absence of its expression, of the expression of love. That's it. It really doesn't exist on its own. It is an illusory force, an illusory quality. When we begin to forget who we really are. So for now, that's all I'll say about that. I, I'm going to go into a little more on this, and then I'll be getting into the topic of worldview if time permits. Uh, but I see we have a caller on the line, so I'm going to attempt to take this call. Let's see how this goes. Caller, you're on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome. Hello, are you there? Hello, caller. Hello, caller, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? Hey, fine, I have a question. Um, sure. What, what is I your name? Um, Andrea. Hi, Andrea, how my are question, you? Hi. Yes. My question is, um, I, this is the first time I've heard your radio show, and I'm kind of confused as to what exactly it is um, your, what's your, uh, I can't find the word, um, you're under the topic of spir spirituality. Yeah, it sounds mm -hmm. like you've got political uh, agendas kind of worked into it, too. I'm, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that this is what I've observed. And um, It's absurd? No, no, no. No, not, I didn't say absurd. This is what okay. I've observed. I, I, I missed that word, then. This is what I've observed. Um, you've observed that. Okay, it. yes. Yeah. And, and the reason why I'm mentioning it is, is because I have not come, ever come across a radio show or anyone so far that kind of intertwined the two, you know, within the philosophy of our own existence and what love and fear is, and then yes. kind of integrating that within ourselves, um, and then having that kind of emerge into the, the, the wider scope of our world, you know, such as government and politics and right and wrong. Um, right. But I just want to know, did I just uh, uh, assess what it is that you more or less have been going, speaking you, about? You absolutely, you absolutely have assessed it correctly. And okay. the reason that our world is in the state that it is in is because m many, many more people have not made this association. That's why the world is in the condition that it's in. That's why people are in the condition that they are in. Okay, I, I if you don't understand that these two things are intricately interrelated, what is going on in the world of what you termed politics, okay, which I would say is simply the world of control, the world of attempting to put out the light of spirit. It is the world of control, of beings that actually believe that they are authority over other beings. Sovereign beings. The spiritual movement is largely, and I, I want to be very clear about what I'm going to say here. A lot of the spiritual movements, or the so-called New Age movements that are out there in the world today, are largely, not all, but largely traps. They are largely places that are used for controlled opposition, for taking someone to a certain level of understanding and then having them pitch their tent there and not go higher up the mountain to understand the wider aspect of what is taking place on this planet. Now, you can choose to believe that or not. I'm not even putting that out there as something that I think or believe. I know this is the case. I know how they're operating and they work. But your assessment about that I am integrating these two seemingly opposite uh, spectrums, spirituality and what you call politics, is absolutely correct. And the reason that we're not collectively, as a race of beings, making more progress towards solving the planet's problems in consciousness is because this completely interwoven and causal relationship between these two, what would 
to many people be seemingly opposite dynamics has not been have not been brought together and understood in their in their connected context. Okay, um, I hear you. Can I ask you another question? Sure. Okay. Uh, I, okay. This is a little bit um, off to the side, but yet I think it's re relevant. Um, there, there's I've no taboo topics here. There's no taboo topics here. You could ask whatever you want openly. Go right it ahead. Has to, has to do with psychology and chemistry. Sure. Um, okay. I've noticed that women have, and just from what I've read and my experiences, um, that women have a better ability to integrate their feelings and their rational thinking t kind of together using both sides of their brain. And then taking sure. that and, and kind of learning how to integrate where they are. And then after that, that then they be, just become the action of who they are um, by taking both into account. Versus men have a tendency, not all of them, I'm just saying in general, yes. have a tendency to be more left brain, more logical, more just, you know, kind of cut off from their, their core emotions. Because they're brought up that way and also chemistry kind of reigns in that direction too with them. I totally agree. Uh, I totally agree with you on those points. And I guess, okay, I guess what, what's confusing me in my life are these two subjects, men and women. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm saying is that, is it possible for, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that women have kind of been looked down upon or considered weak or incapable because sometimes they have a tendency to go more over on their emotional side than they do their reasonable logical side right um, and men seem to go overboard more on their logical side and totally disconnect themselves from their emotional side and render that obsolete or stupid um, I, I agree and and it's important that it's a, it's important to say that Yes, th th these are generalities. They're, you're making generalities, and that's fine. I, I have no problem with that because what you're saying is largely accurate. It is, in general, there is a dichotomy or a schism between the sexes. Now, th th they want us, and when I say they, I mean people who are trying to manipulate us based on this dynamic, based on the awareness of this general dynamic that you're referring to want to use this as a divide and conquer technique so that, that uh, the, the differences between the sexes is played up and played up until we look at it as something that we identify with and cling to. And it, there is physiological, chemical basis for these dynamics that you're referring to. And you are largely correct that this is largely how they play out. No doubt about it that, that met more women have a, a, a more right brain tendencies, more right brain um, uh, functionality taking place in the brain, and th that puts them better in touch with their emotional sensibilities, uh, and uh, some of them do come into better uh, union with their logical side. Some don't, but um, men definitely tend to be much more imbalanced to the left brain hemisphere. And uh, Andrea, did, did you happen to catch my first couple of programs? Um, or is this no, the first time you're listening? This is okay. the first time. I, I would recommend that you go to my website, whatonearthishappening.com. I'd recommend that you check out the videos that I have up there. Uh, there's about, there's around 16 or 17 hours of videos up there. Um, two different lecture series, a four-part series where I discuss these dynamics. And if you check out the podcast page, uh, the first two shows that are up there, this is uh, technically the third show. Um, the first two shows, uh, particularly in, in the second show, I get into the uh, brain chemistry and the structures in the brain, and I break that down. And I'm actually going to talk about this dynamic more tonight when I get into worldview and what I call the worldview schism. And there's, there's two essential worldviews that, um, let's say, the force of fear wants to push people of this world into. Okay? 
one of them is a very left-brained, imbalanced worldview. And people who are extreme left-brained, extremely left-brained, fall for this worldview, this general way of looking at the world and, and themselves in it. And then I'm going to break down a, an extremely right-brained, imbalanced worldview. And uh, those who are very right-brained and have m many right-brained tendencies and, and faculties often fall for this worldview. And I'm going to propose a third overarching, unifying worldview that takes concepts from both of these general worldviews and unites them so that we can understand what really is going on and how if we fall for one side or another, a false choice, okay, often a, uh, a choice that is presented to us to make us imagine that we have a choice between two things. Largely, just like politics, just like the political spectrum of conservative versus liberal, Democrat versus Republican, conservative versus Labor Party, all an illusion, all two sides of the same coin, two wings on the same bird. It's, it's dialectical mechanics. When you give people a choice between two things, nine out of ten times, they will pick one. This is the child being seated at the table that doesn't want to eat his, his meal, doesn't want to eat his vegetables. So you say, hey, Jimmy, you have a choice tonight. Do you want corn or peas? You don't say you're going to end up eating one of these vegetables, like it or not. You make the child think that he has a choice. So you say, you want corn or peas tonight, Jimmy? And he'll say, um, peas. And he thinks he's made that decision when in fact the decision was already made. He was going to end up with one or the other. It's very similar so, to a theory of training horses is like that too. Absolutely, and rats and other animals. And, uh, uh, because largely mammalian animals generally have this type of thought pattern and the structure to their thoughts works in this dialectical methodology. If you understand how that works in the human psyche, and many, many other people do not. It puts you in a unique place of advantage over them to be able to control their actions and their decision-making processes. It's this form of manipulation in a sense. Is that what you're saying? It absolutely is manipulation. It is mind control. It is mind control. It is no less than mind control. And that uh, we're going to talk so much about mind control on this show because I don't like to use the word expert, but as far as experts on mind control goes, I'm about as close to one of them as you're going to find. I've been in, let's just say for now, unique situations where these techniques were unveiled, used, honed, refined, etc. So I will be exposing methodologies of mind control. That's all I'll say about that for now, but future shows will focus specifically on mind control methodologies. And that's in my lectures and presentations on my website. If you go up there, check them out. Uh, you, you should really keep an open mind because it's heavy, weighty material for those who are coming to it for the first time. Take them in order. Don't go out of order. You know, it, it, it really does require establishing a tapestry of information. And if the tapestry is unwound, the picture falls apart. This is, I, I refer to it as a jigsaw puzzle that's thrown, life is like a jigsaw puzzle. What's happening on this planet is like a jigsaw puzzle that's thrown at someone in a dark room. The object is, is to gather up as many pieces as you possibly can, then bring them to a place of light where you could assemble them. And you don't need to, to gather every piece. You do need to gather most of the pieces if you're to see the larger picture emerge. And we need to do that together, collectively, if we're going to see the bigger picture. 
So if you do decide to go up to my site and check out the material that is on there, please keep an open mind. Understand that the, this information is not mine. Now, I, I want to stress that over and over again on this show. This information does not belong to me. There's no copyright on this information. I don't sell anything on my website. Okay? This is information that belongs to everyone in the world. And it is simply information that I have discovered on my journey of seeking. That's it. But, you know, it doesn't require belief. I'm putting it on the table for observation and investigation. And that's really what it is all about. This can be co corroborated if research is done, and many people have done that work and research. And if someone finds something that they don't agree with, don't like, leave it, take what you want, and leave the rest. That's it. I'm not, no one's beliefs, no one needs believe anything that is said here. But again, I would also like to stress that I don't present this information as my belief system either. I present this information as information that I have learned and understood about what is occurring on the planet that we live on. Is basically kind of a breakdown of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, spirituality, morals, and ethics? Is that, that's what I think is happening in, right now. Yes, uh, and sure. And it's, it's devastating. I see it in, in our children. You know, and sometimes yes. I wonder if the majority of, of students uh, are suffering from lead poisoning <laughs> sure. um, because they don't seem to have any real grounded sense of right and wrong um, because right. they're not being taught that because a majority of their parents are either dysfunctional, divorced, or didn't grow up in a, a well-grounded family that had values. That's right. And I, That's you know, I I just see that more and more. <clears throat> I don't know if it's my imagination. Sometimes oh, it's certainly. It is okay. certainly not your imagination. I'll, I'll if you have any uh, any um, uh, hesitancy or uh, uh, fear about that, uh, don't. It, it's not your imagination. There are many people who really see this, and there are many people who understand how this really works. And what you alluded to. You know, lead poisoning or mercury poisoning, but soft yeah, yeah, metal. It's that way, but it's like sometimes it's like they're not there. They're they're disconnected. They sure. don't know what it is to be connected to them to themselves in a sense, in a grounded sense. Or even the beginnings yeah. of that should be appearing by a certain age, and it's not. I'm just right. generalizing again, but it's like a little bit over generalizing too, from what yeah, I. That, that's okay. That's okay. And another thing I won't discourage when people call in is some generalizing. I mean, if we start to use the word all, then okay, we're getting into, yeah. you know, hairy top, you know, hairy uh, uh, vicinity there. Um, generalizing and saying, yes, most people, this is what's happening largely with the young. Uh, it's, you're correct, largely. I mean, you know, uh, we can't be afraid to say what certain numbers are as we see them, because it, it, somebody with some discernment and with you know, a, uh, um, a, a, a view that really is looking at what's r truly going on and not being a, a, a wide-eyed optimist or a naive person can say, yes, this is happening with most people or most of the young. It's not your imagination. Um, well, I can say from my perspective, this is what I've... Right. This, uh, that, that's fine. I mean, look at what we're putting into our children's bodies, the types of food with the types of chemicals, preservatives, <laughs> pesticides... Um, uh, additives. Look at what is in vaccines. We'll, we'll talk about food and vaccines on this show. It's a chemical cocktail, a chemical sludge cocktail that does horrors to the human uh, immune system and, and um, uh, nervous system, particularly the brain. When soft metals get into the brain through the blood-brain barrier, what would you expect to happen? Would you expect morality centers, you know, lighting up and bursting forth and, you know, the, the, the uh, human neocortex really coming into uh, coherence? No, you're going to expect somebody that is becoming dumbed down, not just intellectually, but emotionally and spiritually as well. And we'll talk about all of this on this show, because, again, there's no okay. taboo topics here. 
and we will we will look at the dark. It's the object isn't focusing and um, dwelling on that, but look to, to not look at what actually is is ignoring information. It's ignoring the truth. It isn't that this is negative. This is taking place. No information is negative. What's negative is if we ignore it and do nothing when we had a chance to act. That's what's negative. We need to look at our shadow side with an open mind and open eyes and confront it and work with it and through it. it I, I've said this before on the show, and I'll probably say it a million more times as the weeks progress. There's no escape. There is no escape. We're not going to escape this condition or this lesson. The way out is through. The way out is through. We need to go through the darkness to get to the light. Yeah, I know. Make no mistake about it. I'm sorry. Go on. Yes. I know a song that sings titles. Go ahead. You're you're bringing up really great points. It was uh, your, uh, you know, uh, great, great call and... um, uh, I hope you'll listen in, in future weeks, and I hope that uh, you'll check out my site and some of the videos up there. And uh, I want to thank you for calling and raising uh, really, really thoughtful points. So right. thank you. Thank you. Great. Goodbye. Goodbye. We have another caller, I think. Um, no, they hung up. Okay, so that was Andrea. Great points that she brought up. Um, so far, some really great callers on, on, the, on the show, of the few that we've had. I'll give the call-in number again. Call-in number is 347-884-9417. That's 347-884-9417. So if anyone else calls in, I'll take their call, and uh, you know we can see what's on other listeners' minds. Uh, but... Uh, for, in the meantime, what I'll do is break down another topic and uh, see how far we can get into this. Um, and if, uh, oh, we have another caller. Here we go. Uh, let's see what's on this caller's mind. Here we go. Caller, you're on What on Earth is Happening. Hello there. Uh, uh, 941. How are you? Can you state your name? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Sir, you're no? breaking up a little bit. You're breaking yeah, I'm up. Breaking a little up, bit. but hopefully I can hold it there, or I can call you back from the other phone and apologize. That's okay. I can, He's I, on my I, line. He's on my line, and apologize anyway. No problem. We can hear you now. Go ahead. You can. All right. Basically, I got a little, little overview or feeling about what the show is, and also. Uh, you know, I'm kind of late on that. Uh, just, uh, but I, I have opinion just about anything, which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, okay. uh, you know, not necessarily hostile opinion or not necessarily cynical opinion. But okay. uh, uh-huh. we're talking about basically consciousness. Is that what you're talking about? Examining human that, consciousness. That is absolutely right. That's the core point. I think that's a mystery, and everybody debates about it from Harvard uh, lecturers to the other side of Deborah Chopra to a lot of mystics? That's the sure. big question. Um, you know, uh, so if we're talking about that, at least my opinion, I don't want to use the word humble, but right. my opinion, or may- maybe my humble opinion, because I'm just another human being, is sure. a matter of uh, both examination and faith. Uh, we're always going to oscillating. We're always going to be going back and forth. Uh, consciousness... Um, if life has to be beautiful, consciousness will never have to be explained. Um, if we explain consciousness clearly as a, as a water is in a face or as the law of physics, and then we're in trouble. Uh, uh, we're in big trouble. Uh, there's a book that I'm working on uh, that has to do with uh, some kind of take why the mysteries are there. Right. And the reason that the mysteries are there for a reason, and that is not to hurt us, but to help us. Uh, I don't want to go into it too much on that. I can jump in a different... Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Okay. Go ahead. So You're people fine. are looking for answers, but the answers are the... I mean, they are the truth, and they should be there for a positive reasons that we can never imagine. If we have 
I mean, we have questions. There is a, the question has to be there for a good reason. If we have answers, we're in trouble. Now, and again, my book talks about that, and it gives you kind of uh, think about it. Um, but uh, when it comes to consciousness, again, you know it as well as I do, that uh, even with me being full of myself and doing some kind of research and thought about it, uh, you know, and all that stuff, it's all uh, opinion of mine. Uh, now I can be humble about it because... Um, I see a lot of gentlemen out there touting and beating their own drums um, as the, the knowers of all truth and all wisdom. Whatever it comes to uh, science or to God or to consciousness, um, you know, everybody likes to take side because taking side and sounding righteous sells and motivates people. So a, a talk of certainty and, and a talk of, uh, of uh, it sells, a talk of wisdom and a talk, you know, of kind of muddy uh, understanding of the universe, it doesn't really sell. So if you want to sell books and create seminars to make money or get more uh, uh, listeners talking, you have to be more polemic. Uh, the truth of right. the universe, the truth of the universe, and the answers of the universe are a little bit more fuzzy, and they lie in uh, mystical spaces of both a high heart and a mind. So I don't I want to totally keep. Agree. Yeah. I totally agree, and my intention is not to sell books or, uh, you know, make money doing this. My okay. intention is to help unequivocally set the minds, the hearts, and the spirits of human beings free. Help to do that. I could never do that on my own. That is a free will decision of the people of this planet. That's what I want to see occur because I want to see what the true potential of this species is because the potential is not being lived. To a large extent, it's being squandered and we're capable of so much more than even the, some of the great things that we have done. So much is being held back because many people are living in fear consciousness and many people think that the answer to everything lies in control. And we have a totally controlled society that is working harder and harder, the, the people at the higher echelons of it, to dumb people down more and more and to cut them off from the examination of that eternal mystery. And yes, it is a mystery. That's why different traditions have referred to it as the mystery traditions. And look at the word mystery. Another thing we'll be doing is we'll be playing with something called green language. Green language is looking at a word and what it says phonetically. The mystery is my story. My story. I think I, I think I'm My better. story. Not his story, which is his story. Whose story? Yeah. 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 A male entity, right? The, well, the dominator consciousness, the opposer's consciousness, the, the oppositional co consciousness, and a dominator. So history, they say it's written by the winner, right? The winner writes the history. Well, I would say it's written by the dominator. And the model that we call history that is proposed as truth in our cultures is only a skewed interpretation of, of events and factual evidence that of what actually occurred. And what, I, what I'm trying to help people to get to the understanding of is that the answer is within. It does lie by examining the mystery of consciousness. You know, so, uh, I, and, and part of this does involve the notion of truth. Like, I, I'm, I'm not of the opinion that there is no such thing as truth. Now, maybe one could never become or know the totality of truth. I'm not arguing that any individual can know the totality of truth or the, what I would refer to as the mind of God. That is not what I'm arguing. I am arguing that we can come to enough of an accurate understanding of what is taking place both within us and around us to firmly and positively change the dynamic that we see playing out in our experience. 
That is what this show is about, toward trying to move people toward higher levels of awareness and consciousness to help them to understand the underlying causal factors that have brought us to this point in the game. If we want to go to a, a better shared reality, if we want to co-create I agree with that. Among our, a better uh, shared reality. I, am I there? Yes, am I, you're am still I available? There. Sorry about that. Yep. I don't know if, and I, I agree. And again, the wonderful thing about humans is that we all believe our stories, and um, you know, and uh, like, and 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 a Greek philosopher named Socrates, perhaps uh, uh, by Harvard and the best institutions in the world, he was probably the best philosopher ever. He used to say, "The one thing that I know is that I know nothing." And, um, you know, uh, I want to say, so a lot of things that I will say, I believe them, I teach them, I write books, I give international seminars, and uh, it's not much that I know about you, it's not much, I know that you're a man of, that is for thirst, but for knowledge, um, uh, you know, and again, we get, there's a lot of hints that God gives us, or the universe gives us, or the mystery gives us, in order to motivate us to go forth, forward, but I say we all get caught in our own story. Talking about mystery, it is a Greek word. America took a lot of Greek words. It comes from the word mysterio. Just like history comes from the word historia. You know, all those Greek, those words, uh, and there, you're right, you know, the strong, the winner, usually writes the history, but also, so is the loser. Uh, if you look at the wars or the realities between Greece and Turkey or the, the Americans against the communists, everybody has their own story of what happened after each battle of ideas or each battle of, on the fields of the battlefields of Rio. So we all tend to uh, uh, look at the history in our own ways. Whatever you think you're a victor, sometimes the victim turns it against you and on and so forth. So I do believe, well, the, the, I, I do believe that we're going, forward. we're going forward to a new dimension right now but we're always going to be fighting about some things, like a Yankees and Red Sox, like a Democrats and Republicans. There's going to be a, 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 there, there's not going to be a united church of people meditating, loving, kissing, and working next to each other. That's not what God wanted. I don't want to get up in a, in a neighborhood where every day I get up out from the house, uh, and I don't want to call up a radio show when everybody tells me, you know, I love you, brother, and peace in you all the time, and I love you, and peace, I agree with you. You know, I don't like people pretending that we've got no brains. You know, we're here to, through conversation, through argument, and through agreement, and through back and forth, uh, push of species forward. The evolution is moving on. You know, and I agree that we're going to a place of better understanding about the mysteries of life. But also, you know, there's going to be a diversity in the world. And once you have a diversity in the world, you're going to have conflict. You know, that's why a lot of wars are made. That's why one house attacks the other house across the street, because they don't like their lifestyle or the way they live. Or that's why uh, Dawkins attack Deborah Chopra, and that's why right. Deborah Chopra attacks the church. And Deborah Chopra, which is supposed to be holier than God for a lot of people, attacks the Western medicine, calling them words like idiotic. Uh, in the same time, he says not to be judgmental, which makes him, in a way, idiotic. Because well, we see, can't. I, I, won't, I won't make the statement on this show that we shouldn't be judgmental. I think that discernment is what we need. And, again, the, 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 the thing that I'm modeling is that we can come into harmony. We can come into understanding of what is taking place and whether it serves our evolution in consciousness and moving it forward and expanding consciousness, which is the force that I am referring to as love. That's what love is according to the model that I'm working with here and uh, attempting to explain that as we come more into harmony with this unified way of seeing reality, the unified way of seeing ourselves together, that really there is only one consciousness here. 
It, it doesn't mean this is true. Them. This is true. Totally there is own consciousness. Yeah. It doesn't mean there needs to be a world government or a world religion. I, I would to- stand in opposite, a total oppose. Uh, in, uh, I would oppose those things completely because I think that's that's a. Uh, um, a manifestation the of utopia. people's desire to control other people and, and make them, force them to do what they want them to do and you know be how they want them to be in the world. But what I'm talking about is getting out of dualistic consciousness, uh, of looking at it as us versus them, as um, that, that for me to win, someone else has to lose. That doesn't have to happen. We can all manifest our desires here. We can all come into a more unified way of seeing reality and ourselves in in it. Human beings place in reality, okay? And we don't have to suffer according to the ways that we have been doing things, which is creating enormous self-inflicted levels of suffering, the likes of which we've never seen before. It, it doesn't need to be like this, is what I'm saying. And our yeah. our, our world our world view has a, a big deterrent. Well, a lot of people are talking about that, and you're right. And and there is a part of us that is talking to us about that. And and uh, that part of us is the unity part of ourselves, because we all are brothers and sisters. We all go, came from the same point, sure. and we all going to go back to the same point. So we all in a commonality. You know, we all know. Uh, you know, I agree with you totally. And the other side is our fear and our greed and our illusion of the ego. To a healthy degree, the ego is good. I mean, I like the differences between cultures and sure. between uh, foods and between traditions. Sure. You know, I don't mind if you feel proud or your mother feels proud about your accomplishments. You're a great speaker and you're doing some good work. If your mother is proud about that, that is a functionality of the ego, pride. Sure. And it's I, nothing I wrong not, with that. It's I'm, nothing wrong with that. But I'm, well, not going, I'm not going to suggest in, during this show that the ego needs to completely go away, as sure, a lot of new sure, teachers Sure, but a lot of people so, do. A lot of people do just that. I know, but but I, but it, and that's what makes you different. That's what makes you different. Sure. But I, 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 we have it's to meditate. We have to meditate in, in loving consciousness without becoming fanatics. Because you know what? I, I know a lot of people that, you know, that preach one way and do another, including right. the church, including the church, including people from India. You know, they meditate on one hand. On the other hand, there are people that die in the slums, in poverty. Sure. They abuse the, the poorest people in the world. So on one hand, they talk about love, harmony, and then there is no more unjust nation than India. There, they have a cash test. Cash test means that if sure. you're from such or you make so much money of such a social class, good. Right. And then they call people the undesirables. Yep. I never heard of a nation calling people the undesirables. Yeah, and, the then, and then and they're claiming and they're claiming to be spiritual and to be holistic because all this mumbo jumbo about uh, about unity comes from there. A lot of it. And the then they're system. calling. The, the caste people. system is definitely dualistic consciousness. There is no question about it. Yeah. See, what, what, what we have to get to is understanding that the ego is a tool. It doesn't need to go away. It's a tool for us. It, it, it's how we express ourselves individually. Sure. Now, the, the, the tool, like a hammer, needs to be picked up and used in the service of the individual and then laid down when it is no longer required to be used. However, what the ego has done is set itself up in the house of being, of the being, and says, I'm the ruler of this house now, and I'm not leaving here, and I'm going to run things the way I want to run things. That's, that's the kind of ego that we need to get out of and understand the ego is simply a tool for the individual expression of our unique consciousnesses that we need to express uniquely, but not get into the trap where the tool becomes the ruler of the house. Caller, thanks so much for your... Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. That, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. We have another caller. Okay, I'm going to uh, go to another call. And uh, if, if uh, I have actually have two more people uh, calling in. So hopefully we could ride the show out on calls, and then maybe uh, next week I'll start breaking down worldview. Let's uh, go to the next caller. Here we go. Caller, you're on What on Earth is Happening. What's up, Mark? Hey, who is it? This is Bob Tucker. 
Hey, Bob, how are you, man? I'm doing well, thank you. I just got done with Taco Tuesday. Awesome. How was that? How'd that go? That's, it's great, because uh, basically what it is, is it's a group of friends that host Taco Tuesday over at the house I garden at, and we get to use some of the produce for our tacos from the garden. It's a vegetarian day, so all of the people there uh, are forced to eat vegetarian, and that's because we <laughs> try to practice what we preach, and, you know, we, we decided to, you know, the, a good way to let people in on the vegetarian diet is by inviting them to dinner each week, and that's who great. can turn down tacos? That's great, and good vegetarian tacos, if, if they're made uh, really well, are absolutely delicious. I actually just uh, had uh, some great vegetarian tacos, and I'm going to throw a plug out there because, uh, hey, it's my show, and I'm, I'll plug something if I want. Um, I'll tell you, um, a friend of mine uh, uh, this weekend, uh, his name is Michael, he, he, he brought uh, my girlfriend and, and I to a vegetarian uh, a gourmet vegetarian restaurant in Philadelphia. This place is called Thoreau on uh, on Spring Garden Street between 10th and 11th. And I'll tell you what, nobody paid me to say to say this or to plug this place. This is one of the best restaurants I've ever eaten in, and the the food was just dynamic, vibrant, and energizing. I, I couldn't even believe how uh, uh, the, the chef is like uh, was like an artisan. He was he he was just creating artwork. Um, that's how good it was, and I never say that about restaurants ever. Was it all I'm, I'm vegetarian, somebody, Mark? All vegetarian. I'm not somebody that gets really like crazy into food or yeah. you know seeks you know thrill seeks when it comes to food. But this place was head and shoulders above any place else that I've eaten, and it, it's, it's well, all vegetarian. Well, that's, that's exactly where I'm going to take you out to dinner when I fly into Philadelphia, Mark. <laughs> great, man. Great. You'll really enjoy it. And uh, you know, I am a, I'm a strict vegetarian. I don't eat meat or fish, uh, but I'm not like militant about it with other people. What what I just basically uh, talk about when I do talk about vegetarianism is that if we really want to see um, the, the suffering ended for human beings, I think that needs to include all forms of life. That's why I made the decision to become a vegetarian in my own personal life. So mm -hmm. I, I think in general what we do to others is going to return to us and come back to us. I do believe in the law of balance or karma or however you want to word it. Um, and I think that if, if humanity really wants to see human suffering ended, then we, we need to sh strive that all suffering for all beings uh, be, be ended. And that's why I don't eat meat. So, yeah, I hear again, you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a militant. militant. Uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. either. And uh, I, I'm a vegetarian because it's so gosh darn easy to be, and it, there's so many delicious things that you can eat without having to, uh, as you say, uh, put other beings through suffering. And, and it's a fact. The animals are sentient beings. Sure. Uh, even the the most, uh, even the largest skeptics of, of vegetarianism are uh, privy to the fact that animals are sentient beings. Now, Mark, what on earth is happening? Jeez, oh, man. Um, well, tonight on Blog Talk Radio, Truth Be Told Radio will not be on Blog Talk, but we will be on revolutionbroadcasting.com. So, that, you know, thankfully, they're still going to carry our show. Uh, right. What happened was, Mark, is the Skype Unlimited calling plan, well, right. they basically told me that, uh, well, it's not really unlimited. It's about six hours a day, and I went over my... Uh, quota, oh, so I can't dial. Man. I can't dial into the switchboard, uh, so I'm stuck. That sucks, man. Yeah, no, nah, it's no biggie. I I just have plenty of repeats, and you know, a cool thing is, they'll get to hear what on earth is happening tomorrow in the archives because you're linked up to our uh, archives anyway. So it's great. Right. We don't care, as long okay. as we got something good to listen to. Um, so that being said, Mark, you, you're 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 free to go here right until the end, uh, up until the hour point. You can even oh, go great. a little bit past if you like. Sure, why not? Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's good to hear you, and, and I figured I'd call up and let you know what was going on with our show tonight, and so you could keep going and going and going at it. Uh, you mentioned you had another caller, so I don't want to take away from that, but I don't see anybody on the switch. Well, no, it right looks yet. it looks like they hung up. I, I thought there was somebody behind you, but uh, that's fine. Um, All right. Uh, one, one of the... Um, uh, uh, I, I had something else on vegetarianism, but uh, it slipped my mind. That's okay. But, uh, Bob, I always uh, 
you know, thank you for uh, giving a call in and uh, for everything that you've done helping me out. And um, I'll be listening to your show later on Revolution Broadcasting. Yeah, we'll be on revolutionbroadcasting.com tonight. And, of course, we, we're glad to have your show on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9. Yep. Check out theylie.com. Ladies and All gentlemen, right, Bob, Bob Tustin. Thank you so much. You got it, Bob. Take care, man. All right. So uh, we still have about five minutes left for this show. I think I will just give a brief intro to what I'm going to talk about next show. Um, the, the last show, we really got into polarity and the differences between the forces, the, the basic polarities of love and fear. And we broke them down and we talked about the internal manifestation of love, which we call dominion or sovereignty. We talked about the internal manifestation of fear, which we called confusion or opposition. Okay, And then we talked about the external expressions of both of those forces. When love comes to a fruition, a expansion in the external reality that we share, we have freedom. And when love uh, is absent and fear, the force of fear rules the consciousness of people, we get a condition called control. People wanting to externally control our lives and the lives of others. And that, if left unchecked, leads to something called slavery. And I'd suggest that we're very deeply into that polarity of fear, which is an illusion, which does not really exist in true reality. It is a forgetting of who we are. It is clinging to things that do not really serve us and who we are. And the more we engage in illusion, the farther we're going from the truth. The more we engage in truth, the more we dispel illusion and fear. So, as a very brief introduction to what I'm going to be talking about next show and really delving into, I'm going to be talking about the schism in the worldviews that we hold. The dichotomy between two basic worldviews, one which is a very left-brained, imbalanced worldview, and one which is a very right-brained, imbalanced worldview. So this schism in our psyches and in our worldviews is what ultimately needs to be healed by coming to a third and integral way of viewing the world and ourselves in it. This third worldview, which I'll be explaining next time, is actually a combination of these other two polar worldviews. It's bringing them together. One is the thesis, one is the antithesis. So they're seeming polar opposites, even though they both represent big levels of imbalance in the psyche and in the human brain. But when we transcend that duality of these two worldviews, there, there is a third middle way that emerges that shows us the way out, the way out of the suffering that we are seemingly trapped in. So I think I'll leave it there for now. Tune in next week, Tuesday at 8 p.m. I am Mark Passio, and this has been What on Earth is Happening. Check out my website, www.whatonearthishappening.com. Thank you, everyone, and good night.